Hello everyone, it's your girl Christina. Welcome to another end of month flip through. I actually recorded this earlier today and uh, I recorded it during my son's nap. Maybe you moms can relate to this, but when your baby is napping and you're anticipating that they're gonna wake up any minute. So here I am, I am present. I'm here to share with you all um, some things I've learned about my planner, things that I wanna share. So let's dive right in. So first things first, I had no idea that this existed, but apparently there is a pocket up here. <laughs> like right here, the fact that the packaging is still in here, this is proof that I had no idea this was here. It's funny because I've been using this um, planner since March and I never noticed never noticed. I was watching a YouTube video recently and they weren't using a Filofax, but they were using a, uh, a planner and that planner happened to have a pocket at the top. And I thought, huh, I wonder if mine has one. <laughs> Honestly, wouldn't know because I never bothered to look there. Um, do I plan on using this as a pocket? No. And honestly, it's for the same reasons why I won't use the zipper pocket. Um, I want to keep the shape of the front. And honestly, that packaging in here, that might be helping keep the shape of this planner. It still looks fairly new. I do like this journal being here in this slit. Um, and the reason I don't like want to keep too many things in the pocket, especially like little things, is because this is real leather. Leather tends to change its shape, it stretches, and it loses its form. Um, but I mean, even though I have this journal in this um, slit here, I do like that it takes up most of the space. And you know what? I don't know if you're going to be able to tell here on camera, but right here, there's a little like a dent here that's already taken shape to the notebook. But honestly, I don't mind that. I like having this notebook here because um, I just feel like when you have a planner like this, um, if you have pockets, I personally like to have things in the pockets. <laughs> of course, it's natural for things to look worn over time, but I don't know, it's just, I, th I don't know if it's like my OCD, but I, I do like at least the cover looking fairly new. I just love that clean look, so. So yeah, just wanna preserve the cover for as long as I can. And since we're here in the front of the planner, um, this credit card holder, this plastic one here, is from cloth and paper, and so are these page flags. The deco card is from Poi and Hun. Um, I just, I love, I love opening up my planner to this. Like, this is just beautiful. This is a wonderful design moment. And honestly, I have no idea what I will do for 2024 because this is so pretty. Um, it'll probably take me some time to put something together or like come up with something new. Um, if not, I might end up using this again. Who knows? <laughs> My quarterly insert, um, it's been a minute since I've shared this with you all. This insert is from Poi and Hun. I've been using this insert as a habit tracker for working out. Um, it didn't start out that way. That wasn't the intention when I first purchased these. Um, it kind of just happened that way. Fitness has been my big goal for 2024 after having my son and I just, I thought it would be great to track my workouts here just so that I can see it, see my overall progress. I just wish I was that person that prioritized working out. I'm not. So it is a struggle. Now, if you watched, I think it was my last end of month flip through. Yes, I think it was because July, I fell off. Um, I made so much progress in May, June, and then I fell off in July. Um, yeah, I just, 
I didn't make time to work out in July for good reasons. I was traveling and spending time with my family. Someone did mention to me before that I should probably just set manageable goals because looking at my moments of failures can be discouraging. However, I think with my experience with using a planner, and especially now that I'm a mom, I mean, if you're a mom, you know that something that happens with your child can instantly make you not even look at your to-do list for the day. I mean, that's just how it is. Sometimes it's like, you know what? That's just the kind of day it was. Like, she'll be sick. Um, I wasn't able to complete the things that I wanted to, but oh well, I'm gonna have to just move it to the next day. And so I think because of that experience, I personally don't feel discouraged when I look at this. If anything, like I like to look at it as a whole, like my failures and my successes. I mean, it, it tells me where I'm at for the whole year. And I, like, I love seeing this as a whole because it just tells me what kind of year I'm having. And honestly, this is, this is me trying. Like I'm trying here, I'm putting in the effort. And honestly, this is better than nothing, like not trying and not tracking and not doing anything. So I think with my failures and my successes, I'm grateful for both because both have taught me things. You know, everyone is different. Um, I remember when I first started using a planner after college and using the monthly overview as a habit tracker, if I didn't hit my reading goal for a week, and I didn't cross that off, that would bug me. And that, I don't know, that might be you, right? Like seeing how I have a lull in April and July might, you know, bother you or might discourage you, but I think everyone's different. Um, that's why your planning system is your planning system. It, it's meant to be a tool to help you. So the next thing I want to talk about, um, it's actually something I noticed when doing these end of month flip throughs is that I rarely ever talk about whether or not I complete the goals. Maybe we'll mention it here and there, but I don't actually go in depth and like go through this page here. Um, the pen that I use to cross off on the dot stickers is the uni pen. This is in um, the nib 01. This is the smallest one and honestly I prefer this. I did buy an 03 and it was too thick. Um, but yeah, this oil-based marking pen is perfect for if you are writing on a transparent sticky note or a sticker like these dot stickers. For workouts, my goal for August was to have four strength workouts per week plus three cardio workouts. Um, I did not do that. <laughs> I did not complete that, but um, I did. I did a lot, like my body was moving in the month of August and I'm beyond proud, even if I didn't complete each goal, but I crossed it off anyway because I'm happy with my progress. The third box is my reading goals. I wanted to read two books and this isn't uh, permanent, but I decided to list out the books in this column here because I wasn't using the column to begin with. And the two books I read are Recapture the Rapture by Jamie Wheel and then Tom Lake. I am almost done with Tom Lake, but I read most of it in August, so I kind of consider that a August book. The fourth box are my home goals. Curtains. Um, you'll see here that I put an arrow and that arrow means I am migrating that to a future date. I have decided that I'm gonna put the curtains on hold. Um, the next one is a mood board for the dining room and I put an X and that did happen. And then we ended up getting our dining table just a couple days ago and then our chairs are on the way. They are coming in November. So I'm so happy that the dining room is slowly but surely coming together. Um, the very last goal is trinkets for the living room. I didn't draw an X, I only placed one piece of the X uh, because I feel like I've started that but I haven't completed it. 
I still have a couple of things to find. And then my family goals, plan for Mexico City trip, which that is done. Um, plan road trip to LA. Uh, what That one, I just put one piece of the X because I'm actually waiting to hear back from our friends to see what weekend they're available. So I, I'm waiting on somebody else. So I haven't crossed that off date night that definitely happened and the very last one is take shelby to the library i talked about this with you all in my august setup that i wanted to start taking shelby to the library for readings um, they have a designated time for newborns to two-year-olds and that is 10 30 in the morning but as you can see i do not have an x because I realize that Shelby wakes up from his nap anywhere between 10, 15 to 11. And that means I don't even have a chance to get to the library. So maybe instead of leaving it blank, I'm just gonna put an arrow because I still want to do this. It just can't happen right now. I think when Shelby drops down to one nap, I can actually do that. <laughs> My intention for the month is I want to reset, recharge, and rest, and honestly, I did that. I feel great. My sleep has been also on another level. Like, I just checked my Apple Watch, like the health app, and I checked to see, because I wear this while I'm sleeping, and it does a pretty good job with tracking your sleep, or at least I think it does. I checked and it said that in the last week, I averaged seven and a half hours of sleep. Like, yes, that makes me so happy. And I feel it, like I feel it in my body. I feel it mentally. Like I don't feel so cloudy and what's the word? Like mommy brain, like forgetting things, like leaving the stove on, right? Like I'm, I'm a lot more alert and attentive. It's amazing what good sleep can do for you. I was hoping to incorporate baths into my nighttime routine, but honestly, I just I just felt like it was too much work. <laughs> what I did do was start my evening routine sooner. So I would start getting ready for bed anywhere between 8 to 8.30, and then I was hoping to fall asleep anywhere between 9 to 9.30. I've been reading before going to bed and I feel like that is so much better than turning on like a TV show or being on my phone. So yeah, that was the change that I made in my nighttime routine. And then the bills have that all checked out. And also, um, someone did share with me how they use this. So I think once I get my white Posca pen, I am gonna start using these a little bit better than how I'm using them now. Other than that, this looks pretty good. And then um, I have shared with you all this bottom left section. This tends to be things that I want to do in the month. And so once I have done it, like once I've planned it, um, I put the date that I ended up doing it on. The activities that didn't get completed or they weren't planned, I'm just gonna migrate this into September. The last thing I wanna share are my weekly inserts because as many of you know, last month I was using the cloth and paper horizontal weeklies and that was an adjustment. And then this month I went back to my lovely, lovely time blocking inserts. Yes, so happy. Love the colors, love the stickers. Um, the green dot stickers, this is pistachio by cloth and paper. And then I also added in a couple more things. I don't know if I mentioned the time blocking stickers here, like this was a lot of fun to use. Um, I used it very sparingly. I didn't want to overdo it um, because I really wanted to use the dot stickers. Um, and then I also started using, I, it's so funny because I told you guys about the Lux page flags from Cloth and Paper a couple of months ago, how I was like worried to use this, this bluish one here. 
It looks kind of white on camera, but it's, it's actually blue, like a baby blue. This baby blue with the green and then with the time blocking, like it, it turned out really cute. That's what my August weekly setups look like. I think that's it for my end of month flip through. Now today is September 2nd. And so I have gone into, I think it's cloth and papers, new weekly insert, their time blocking one. Um, I'm going to show you a real quick peek. <laughs> I feel like I'm not that great at like putting stickers together and stuff like that, but I don't know. I kind of like did something fun <laughs> for September. There we go. <laughs> um, anywho, I think the next video I'm coming out with is my September plan with me. And then after that is um, a weekly setup. So I'll see you all then. Bye.